In this video, we'll complete the calculation of the eigenvalue decomposition for the matrix that we used to introduce it, because we really shouldn't talk about a decomposition without ever calculating one. And we realize that there's still a little bit of work to be done. Why? Because we have to invert the matrix X. It's X lambda X inverse. So even after all of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors have been computed, a little bit of work remains to be done to invert the matrix X. All right, so let's do it right here. I'll do it relatively quickly, just because we need to get it done. But this is just an illustration of the fact that a little bit more work is indeed to be done. And as I'm doing this, let me ask you the question, how do we know that this matrix is invertible? So as I'm writing this problem on the board, you can think about that question. All right. So let me answer that question first. We know that this matrix is invertible because we assumed that the original matrix has a full set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In other words, it has three linearly independent eigenvectors. So the eigenvectors are linearly independent. That means the columns of this matrix X are linearly independent. So the matrix has an inverse. As we're about to discover, well, we're actually about to discover its inverse. Looking for my eraser. Oh, on the floor. All right, here we go. So I'll do it silently and you can do it along, even pause the video. I'll probably speed up this video because there's nothing interesting, because there's nothing interesting going on here. All right. All right, and here we have it. So now we have all of the elements of the eigenvalue decomposition. So let's fill them in. And there you go. We've calculated our first eigenvalue decomposition. So in the next video, we'll talk about its most important implications. And then in subsequent videos, we'll talk about the numerous applications of the eigenvalue decomposition.